Well, welcome aboard everybody. Good afternoon. My name's John. Uh, this is Terence the train you're on this, this afternoon. Welcome aboard, welcome to Jersey. It's going to take us about half an hour to get to St Albans. We will be stopping at West Park along the way. We'll push a little bit of the journey. It's on the main road. And then as soon as we get to West Park, we get a nice little ride along the seafront on the old Jersey Western Railway line. I've got some French people on board, so I will be playing a tape as well. for your own safety as we will get close to a bit of traffic and a few posts and obstacles along the way. We'll enjoy your ride round. where we come off the main road and we'll have, we have a nice little drive along the seafront. Yeah. It's going to stop for some people here who want to get on the train, I think. trip along the seafront, right? Eh? The track what we're following is the old Jersey Western Railway line following the path of the old steam engines. What used to run up and down here between 1870 and 1937, the trains up and down here. A beautiful view across the bay to our left, Elizabeth Castle. Elizabeth Castle, she dates back to 1599, named after Queen Elizabeth I. It's also where Sir Walter Raleigh used to live. Sir Walter Raleigh was the first governor of Jersey back in 1600. Elizabeth Castle, steep with history, there's a couple of exhibitions out there, telling you all about the castle. 
and it's also worked on it. Um, Charles II sought refuge there during the Civil War years. And for a thanks, he gave the Governor of Jersey then a present. He named a, a lump of land in America, New Jersey, after Jersey, as a thank you. Elizabeth Castle on your left there. You can walk across at low tide. The tide is going down at the moment. Or when the tide's in, you can get one of the amphibious vehicles across. The Chateau Elizabeth, date de l'an 1590. Ce bon terrain dit, le premier gouvernement. Vers le début du XVIIe siècle, la guerre civile britannique se déroulait entre les parlementaires, si plein de fait, et les royalistes. Le futur roi Charles II trouva refuge dans ce château fort. Son protecteur fut le gouverneur de Versailles de l'époque, Sir Philippe de Carter. Quand le roi rentra en Angleterre pour récupérer son trône, pour remercier de Carteret, il lui fit cadeau d'immenses terres dans les Amériques. De Carteret partit donc vers le Nouveau Monde, donnant le nom de New Jersey à son nouveau domaine, lequel non persiste de nous. Au sommet du pont dit Westmount se trouvaient les potences publiques. De tous les condamnés furent pendus jusqu'au 1829, ce qui fut l'origine de son autre nom de mont patibulaire. Vous auriez pu être pendu pour le vol d'un pain ou d'une manuelle. Zerzé avait son propre bourreau professionnel qui fut rémunéré d'une maison en belle royale, d'une demi-couronne ou d'une chemin par semaine, et en plus il avait le droit de garder tous les habits du défunt. The hill up on your right hand side there, what you're going past, the old name for that is Gallows Hill or Hangman's Hill, where there used to be the hangings on the island many years ago. They'd hang you up there and leave you in full view of St. Helia. Now on our way around to St. Corbin, we will cross over four of the twelve parishes of the island. We're in St. Helier at the moment. We'll cross into St. Lawrence, then St. Peter, and then part of the parish is St. Rolard at the end there. Jersey divided into 12 different areas called parishes. This is West Park, West Park Beach down on your left here. The beach down here on the left used to be the airport, believe it or not. If you people are over to Jersey, back in the 1930s, you get landed down here on the beach. You'd fly with Jersey Airlines and land, and the de Havilland Dragon Rapide, a twin propeller aeroplane, get landed down here on the beach. So that's the old airport. Il y a de nombreux restaurants, cafés et bars à saint -Tour. Des hôtels présentent des bras à l'intérieur des wagons, car c'est assez serré le long de la route. Justement, pour passer à un pierre agréable. Le château Elisabeth date de l'an 1599. Ce bon souvent, le premier coup. Le premier aéroport de Jersey se trouva sur la plage à West Park. En arrivant pour vos vacances à Jersey au cours des années 30, vous aurez une série sur le rêve juste derrière ce mur. Votre avion serait un de Havilland Dragon rapide. Il était courant de voir une demi-douzaine de ces avions stationnés sur la plage de la foule. Bien entendu, il ne pouvait atterrir qu'à mauvais passe.
Oh, this is Fuss Tower. Fuss Tower gets its name from the granite Martella Tower on your right there. These towers, we call them Jersey Towers. There used to be 28 of them around the island. We will pass another one further around. But they were all built back in the late 1700s, early 1800s. Built back in those days to protect the island from the French during the Napoleonic Wars, or Napoleon's days. The first tower has its name on this tower on the other side of the road. At the end of the 18th century, the British army in Jersey looked at the success of the success of the British military in the Napoleon Bonaparte on the continent of Europe. The only defense of the island was the Chateau Fort. So the army entered the construction of 30 tours fortified in the name of the Côte de Lille, so 4 around the Bay of St. Aubin. This was the first to enter. The garnison consisted of 12 soldiers, Ils courir de place en place et porter leurs mousquets dans tous les sens. Deux canons se trouvèrent au sommet et les mâchés coulis furent pour verser de l'huile bouillante sur les attaquants. Les murs ne faisaient pas sur la mer, ils sont plus épais que ceux de l'autre côté, afin de résister aux boulets de canons tirés depuis la terre. Comme le plus possible, l'armée allemande a détruit plusieurs de ces tours au cours de l'entraînement de Zanti. La frontière entre Saint-Élie et Saint-Laurent est marquée dans le mur côtier juste avant que vous atteigniez le station de Le grand égout de couleur brune, déversant sur la place de cet endroit, découle un ruisseau qui opéra jadis six moulins le long de la vallée faisant limite de paroisse, dont son nom anglais de Mille. St. Helier is the biggest populated parish on the island, the capital. Population of Jersey, around about 90,000, of which about half live in St. Helier. You see a little stream down there on the left-hand side where the gentleman is with a young child. That's the boundary of St. Helier and St. Lawrence. Each parish on the island is divided by a little stream like that. You can see the boundary marker on your left there as well in the wall. From now into St. Lawrence. And coming up on your right now is the old station cafe. Real old railway station this is. You can see the old platform in front there. Pictures of the old steam engines inside there as well. And the old trains. the trains run up and down here up until 1937. In 1937 we had a big fire in St. Aubin's, what destroyed all our rolling stock. And that was the last year the trains ran up and down here. Passenger trains anyway. L'Homme Station de Cafe est la seule station de chemin de fer qui subsiste au moment de l'attente. Elle retient la plateforme de devant, d'où les passagers montaient à bord des trains à vapeur. Ces jours-ci, le bâtiment est seulement utilisé pour servir des petits déjeuners et repas de midi. Cette station penche nettement vers à cause du poids de tous les trains qui s'arrêtaient devant elle au fil des années. Now this is Coronation right. Park now over on your right hand side you see a big park across see. the road on the right. The Paul McGrounds is park with Mr and Mrs Boots. Boots the chemist fame. They used to live in that big house you can see through the back of the park there with a the red roof. Two flagpoles on top. They came from Nottingham Mr and Mrs Boots and later became known on the island as Lord and Lady Trent. Lord Trent, Mr Boots, died back in the 1930s. His wife Lawrence, she denoted the grounds of the house to the public of Jersey and that's the result, Coronation Park on your right beautiful big park there A l'arrière des Coronation Gardens se trouve une grande maison à toiture brune appelée Vélem Elbeck qui appartenait à Florence Boots l'épouse de Jesse Boots qui fonda la grande chaîne britannique de pharmacie Boots Chemist Elle était connue sous le nom de l'autre Lady Trent the Coronation Park at Taylor Jacques. On the descent of Jesse Boot, suite à une antique 
conférence décida d'ériger un monument à son nom et fit venir le célèbre architecte et artiste Robert René Hannick, qui créa les vitraux dans l'église à côté des jardins pour tenter de mourir. Cette église est maintenant une grande attraction touristique. Les œuvres en verre valent maintenant des millions de livres sterling. Now on your right hand side you've got the white church over on the right there, the glass church, as we call it. Better known, well it's St. Matthews of Millbrook is its real name, but see the white church on the right there? Better known on the island as the glass church. It's famous for the beautiful work inside the church. The work of René Lalique, a famous French glass designer from Paris, Lalique. When they put the work in the church there back in the 1930s. It actually got put in as a memorial in memory of Mr. Boots, the chemist. His wife, Florence, Mr. Boots' wife, Florence, wanted something to remember him by, so she asked René Lalique to put the glass in the church in memory of her husband. C'est à Belle Royale que la plupart des grands canons allemands sont disposés. Si vous descendez sur la plage en cet endroit, vous verrez des lucarnes où sortent les canons faisant face à la mer. Les plages furent recouvertes de mines et les murs en béton le long de la baie sont les défenses anti -chères. Selon Hitler, Jersey faisait partie de l'Angleterre et il n'allait pas la voir. Il dépensait une bonne partie de son budget militaire dans les fortifications de Dieu. La libération de Jersey se déroula un jour après la fin de la guerre mondiale, soit le 9 mai 1945. Right, this is Bell Roll then. Bell Roll, about halfway around the bay. And if you notice now along the seafront, you'll see the granite wall is now turned to concrete on our left hand side. This is all the work of the German army during the occupation. The Germans actually got the prisoners of war with all this reinforcement work here on our left. The Germans also make the use of the old railway line after the fire in St. Albans in 1937 when they destroyed all our trains. <coughs> Excuse me. The line was still going round the bay here and the Germans made good use of the old line. They got a train from France and they brought it over here and they used to run it up and down here and use it as an ammunition train. And you see this long piece of concrete wall coming up now on your left hand side. This wall on your left here was actually built by the Germans to hide their ammunition train behind. This is exactly the same length as the old German ammunition train. And it used to stand behind here when it was stopped, hidden from the sea, hidden from the Allies. Jersey's nine miles long, five mile wide, population around about 90,000 and if you walk round the island, round the coastline, it's about 50 miles round. Celle-ci date de 1794. 
qui fut construite pendant la période de la terreur Ops. Plusieurs tours y ont été transformées en habitations. Le vignoble de Saint-Aubin est une terre principale. Elle a été transformée. the main road now over on our right hand side you'll see a white house opposite see the white house opposite there the one with the archway the blue railings blue windowsills oh, yeah. lily langtree used to live there the jersey lily she used to use it as a summer cottage lily was born on the island born in 1854 i think it was something like that she was the daughter of the dean of jersey and she married a millionaire when she was 21 year old edward langtree's name of in england Lily really died back in the 1930s, I think. Died in France in Monaco. Is it, is it, is it, is it? We're now over our final stream and into the parish of St. Romain. Our final parish along the way. out there to protect St. Albans from the pirates in those days. And if you walk along the harbour in St. Albans there you'll come across the oldest building in the village. It's called the Old Courthouse Restaurant nowadays, made famous by the Gergerac series on TV where they filmed Diamond Mills by, remember that one? St. Albans there. the last little bit now along the main road, uh, sorry along the seafront, we'll be coming on to the main road shortly for the final leg.
Okay, this is it for St Albans. We've checked the board there for the times back. This one will be leaving shortly. But there'll be, I think, it's two or three. return late to St Helia. My name's John and you're on Sands to train. It'll take us about half an hour to get back to oh, St Helia. Excuse me. See the tides well out now. Jersey's got the third biggest tidal changes in the world, believe it or not. The tides, tidal changes. The tide can get up to 40 feet high, tw over 12 metres high. The third biggest in the world. I think Thunder Bay, Canada's the top one. And we're third. So if you have ever out at low tide, big curve will just come in pretty fast, especially in the east of the island, that. Just remind you please just to keep your arms and legs inside the carriages as we go along. This bit of the journey is on the main road. And then we get a nice gentle ride around the seafront. Jersey's three biggest industries are finance, tourism and then agriculture. Here's a sign of the agriculture on our left hand side here, in the field opposite and in the middle now of the potato season. They're growing the new potatoes here in the field underneath the plastic. There was a lovely big white house set back in the field there. See the big white house at the back? That's one of the old cob houses, as we call them on the island. Years ago, when St Albans used to be the main harbour of the island, the boats used to sail out of St Albans here, up to the North Atlantic, to Canada, and North Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland, to the great fishing banks up there, to get the cod in the old days, and used to sell the fish on the way back down through the Americas to make the money. And that house there uh, was owned by one of the old ship's masters from the past. We call them cob houses. The cob got paid for them. <laughs> because you know there's quite a few rich and famous people living on the island. We have Ian Wisdom living here and the golfer. And Nigel Mansell and Derek Warwick, the racing driver. Jack Higgins, the author. 
and there's a few more. If you look at these apartments opposite here on the left hand side, top floor there, that penthouse is owned by Lady Sheila Butlin, wife of the late Billy Butlin, starting off the holiday camp craze in Britain. colonial houses of the island, they're the old colonial Victorian architecture of the island. Langtree's old summer cottage there, the white house opposite, and the blue railings and the archway across there, where Lily Langtree once lived, a house called Merman, named after one of her racehorses, Merman won a, the Ascot Hall Cup in England, named the house after him. Lily Langtree, born back in 1854, christened Emily Charlotte Le Breton when she was born, where she got married to a Belfast yeah. millionaire. At the age of 21, Edward Langley's name. Famous grandmother with her with Queen Victoria's son, Edward. The Prince of Wales at the time. Now this is a gun site cap in the gun site area. Old German gun site on your right and on the left. Lovely big Martella Tower there. One of the old Jersey towers, as we call them. 28 of these towers round the island. They used to be dotted round our coastline to protect us from the French during the Napoleonic Wars.
Now this is Bell Roll though. We're about halfway. Jersey in the late 1940s, early 1950s. Jersey used to hold the Grand Prix, believe it or not. In this area here, Bell Roll, this used to be the pit stop for the Jersey Grand Prix. Jersey Grand Prix was between 1945 or 46 to 1954. Sterling Moss, one of the big names to race over here. And we used to race down Victoria Avenue here, here on our left hand side and back up the inner road and Bell Roll was halfway around. Came to an end in 1954 though, the Jersey Grand Prix, due to a series of bad accidents. We had a really bad one here in 1951 at Bell Road. And that brought an end to the Jersey Grand Prix for safety reasons more than anything else. the glass church again over on the left hand side and you see the south facing fields here on our left they're facing the sun all day long that's where you get the early crops of the jersey rolls The beach 
churchyard on your right here, this is Cusk Tower. The beach down here on the right, where the aeroplanes used to land, back in the 1930s. When they came over on holiday to Jersey, they'd land on the beach there, down on your right. Fly in with Jersey Airlines. On the de Havilland Dragon Coming up towards Dusk Tower. Dusk Tower, I'm going to be making a stop here. And it gets us there to the Dragon Tower over on the left hand side there. Simply the Dusk Tower, you see, you head west of Dusk Tower, that's what it's like. Not the Dusk Tower to the Dusk Tower. Dusk Tower?
dry at the moment. The old man for that is Victoria Marine Lake. That was opened up by Queen Victoria back in the 1890s. As was Victoria Avenue here on our left. Queen Victoria, a regular visitor to Jersey. We've also got a Victoria Village. And the Victoria Park across the main road. And the statue of Queen Victoria. Thank you. 